Wow. It's finally happened, guys. As of recently, about two weeks ago, as of recording of this video, the Pokemon Presents announcement has finally released Diamond and Pearl Remix, Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Now, while these games have been highly anticipated for many years at this point, it's raising a bit of concern as to whether or not these games will actually be good. Will they be the amazing Diamond and Pearl Remix that we have been wishing for? So, let's talk about it. Hey Pokemon Champions, what's going on? It's Champion Dark Blaze here and Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. They have finally been released. These are the Diamond and Pearl Remix we are going to be getting later this year in November. Now, while these games do look very, very good, I'm excited for them. I'm going to enjoy these games very, very much and we'll play them all the way through and enjoy the content that they have to offer. Now, while the art style that has been chosen for this game looks very, very nice for a Pokemon game on the Switch, the thing that's getting the most backlash, in my opinion, that I've seen on Twitter among the fan base, is the decision to use this chibi art style for the characters in the games. And I really just, I really don't think that was the way to go, but maybe as we see more trailers, maybe I will grow accustomed to this and, you know, maybe I'll warm up to it. But as of right now, I don't think that was the best route to go. But aside from that, what are the main concerns that the fanbase has with these Diamond and Pearl remakes? Well, it can be summed up in two words. Faithful remakes. Yes, in the Presents video, these games were described as going to be faithful remakes to Diamond and Pearl, and that raises a lot of red flags and concerns because will they add new content, a lot more new content to these games to make them stand out from the originals? What will they add? What could they take away from the original Diamond and Pearl? And will they be upgraded versions? So far, the only upgrade we can see is just the graphical quality, the visual style of these games. So why don't we break down some of the concerns and thoughts that I have about these games so far. Now, it's not just going to be a straightforward rant, because I will be talking positively about these games, but there will be a lot of negativity and concerns when it comes to these remakes. So why don't we hop in? So the first concern that many fans actually have about this is that because they're faithful remakes of Diamond and Pearl, and they did not mention anything in regards to Platinum, many fans are concerned that they won't include a Platinum episode or a Platinum-focused story. Now, in order for these games to be very, very good, they must include many, many Platinum elements. And that goes from the regional decks, to the progression of the story, to the Battle Frontier being included, to all the Pokemon that you can battle, the difficulty, the intrigue that the Platinum story offered. It just needs to add all those elements from the Platinum game into Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl for them to be successful because if they are straight up faithful remakes of the original Diamond and Pearl, ooh, that is not gonna sit well with the fan base at all. So Platinum elements definitely do need to be included and the main one is the Distortion World. If we don't have anything with the Distortion World or in relation to Giratina or even Send Off Spring and Turn Back Cave, that's definitely going to give these games a bad review in the eyes of the Pokemon fanbase. So that is, that is a must. But the other thing that definitely draws some attention for these games is since they're faithful, will they include all the original elements of Diamond and Pearl? Will they include HMs? Will they include the difficulty of the HMs needed for Victory Road, needing a total of five in order to make it through? Will they not use the Platinum decks? Then that's a big hindrance to the enjoyment of Diamond and Pearl. The upgraded decks for Platinum is what makes Platinum the definitive Sinnoh experience, along with all the multitude of other upgrades that that game offered for Diamond and Pearl. So if things like that aren't offered in the game, Will that make the game just as enjoyable? Will it make it the actual Diamond and Pearl remix that we wanted? In my opinion, they have to do away with a gems like they've been doing for the past several releases over the past several years. We got Poke Ride back in Sun and Moon, so maybe that could be a feature in the Diamond and Pearl remix. It doesn't seem likely, but they need something to replace the HMs. They didn't even have an Sword and Shield, and Corviknight Taxicab was your replacement for Fly. 
Now, some thoughts I do have on the game so far is that they definitely do look really good. I think the art style chosen for these games definitely is something expected from the Switch, but I think it just... The art style fits with Sinnoh, I really like it. The way they did it, especially with the view of Lake Verity in the beginning of the trailer, I think that that works really well in my opinion. I think that was perfect. And I think if we see more trailers, people will grow more accustomed and they'll like the art style a lot more. It's just, the, again, it's the chibi choice that I think a lot of fans are gonna have to kind of get used to and start liking. But there are some things that the Diamond and Pearl remake trailer actually showed off that is new, that does show that upgrades are possible with these remakes as we've seen with Fire Red Leaf Green, Heart Gold, Soul Silver, and Auras. And that's the fact that when a trainer battle loads up, the same kind of screen we used to see back in Generation 4 does appear, but the trainer actually shows up right away instead of having a little load time that takes a little bit of time. On top of that, the same kind of way that Let's Go had their battle styles animated, we see that in the Diamond and Pearl remake trailer. We see that kind of same kind of battle field and battle animation that we get in Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. And on top of it, the way they threw the Pokeball and the way it was captured, I don't know. It seems like they might incorporate the Let's Go catching mechanic in the games. I don't know if they will. We've only seen like one capture in the trailer. But if they did, because the battlefield, again, that animation, the whole way it's designed, it looks like the way they did it in Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. And if they did include the way that you can catch Pokemon in Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, I think that would be actually really, really fun. I personally really enjoyed it because it added a level of immersion in those games. You felt like you were actually going to catch the Pokemon. But while those are some good things that I noticed in the trailer, you know, there isn't too much that the trailers actually showed us that was actually new. You know, will they be including all the new items from Generation 8 and Generation 7, 6, and 5? Will they include new battle mechanics? Will they include new upgrades that were introduced in Sword and Shield? Will competitive battling be as easy in the Diamond and Pearl remakes as it is in Sword and Shield? You can pretty much make any Pokemon ready for competitive battling compared to earlier generations. But again, these are called Faithful Remakes, so there's stuff that they potentially could not include from newer generations, or they could not include from Platinum as well. But in order to make these games successful, they need Platinum elements. They need newer mechanics and newer quality of life improvements from newer generations. And honestly, if we see more trailers and they do show us that they can add, add, add new stuff in, I think that would just be very, very good. They need them in order to be very good remakes. Honestly, even if they added, you know, some Platinum episode at the end of the story or maybe even in the post game because maybe the story is more focused on how it was in Diamond and Pearl, you know, maybe we could get something similar to everything with Rayquaza and the Draconids in Auras. And maybe we can get another Delta-like episode, maybe not focused on Giratina, but maybe focused on Arceus or focused on Darkrai. I think it's likely that we could get a kind of Delta episode focused on Arceus at the end of the Diamond and Pearl remix, seeing as how we're getting Legends Arceus in early 2022. And honestly, I'm curious if these games will be compatible with Legends Arceus and with Sword and Shield. These are Generation 8 titles because they're coming out after Sword and Shield and before Generation 9, so they need to be compatible with the new generations. I'm not saying compatible with, you know, things like Sun and Moon and Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon because obviously that's not possible, but they also do need to be compatible with Pokemon Home and Ilka, or ILCA, I guess, if you don't say Ilka. But that company working on the Diamond and Pearl Remix actually produced Pokemon Home, so they probably will be compatible. So hopefully, even if they don't include the Platinum decks right off the bat for Diamond and Pearl, maybe they'll give Pokemon Home accessibility right off the bat. That way you can still transfer in those Pokemon that are available later on in the game, even if you can't get them right away in the wild. I don't know, I feel like I'm just rambling at this point, but those are my thoughts and concerns for Diamond and Pro Remix at this point. I do think they are going to be good. I'm going to play them regardless, and I'm going to have a fun time. I've talked about in the past what my potential team is going to be, and maybe I'll use that team. But I don't know, we'll see what the future holds, and I'm just waiting for more trailers, because when we get those trailers, we'll talk about them and talk about more thoughts and concerns that we have. But until next time, let me know down in the comments below if you're excited for the Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl releases, and until next time, train hard, I'll catch you guys later.